Well, good, good afternoon, everybody. You're gonna. This is a talk from 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 a a, a user. I'm I'm not a developer, so I know very little about all that good stuff that uh, Nathan and and not and I, and I do. Um, Basically, um, I want to run run through today about my journey in GIS and how it's, tra how it's sort of changed over the last four, 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 40 odd years, uh, which has been sig sig uh, sig uh, sig uh, significant. Quite a lot of you people might not have been alive then, um, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a bad background of, of what used to happen in the old 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 days. Um, and I've been running these QGIS workshops for for geologists uh, mainly in Perth, but also also up up the uh, east east coast of Australia. And we're slowly getting the message out there that QGIS is a really good piece of software, and you can forget those other ones. You have to pay big heaps of money for. Anyway, so basically, I'm just going to go go through who who I am, give some people an idea of what ge ge the geologists do, because you might not be aware of the, some of the sort of the tasks that that that, 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 that we get up to. Um, a bit of a history of the past and present, the way the way we we did things and the way we do things now. Um, how how the sort of de 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 the desktop GIS, GIS applications have really changed the way uh, we 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 do 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 our work, um, and the the effect of the arrival of Q of QGIS in, in our e e ecosystem, um, and the opportunities for learning with Q Q Q QGIS and it's obviously sort of GIS implications. Um, and also how, how we make uh, really great, great maps, which most geologists enjoy ma making maps. So basically, as mentioned before, I'm, I'm an exploration of my mining, mining geologist. I worked all sorts of fun places all, all around, around, around the world. Um, I worked for 20 years for Re Re Rio Tinto, CRA e Exploration and Ar Argyle Diamonds. And I got downsized in the late uh, non, uh, uh, 1990s with a lot of other, other geologists with those big companies and I've been consulting and doing other bits and pieces then which has been fun I must admit doing all sorts of things um, and as mentioned I was a map, map info user for, for 20, 20 years but thank goodness Q, Q, QGIS has come along and say, say and, and, and saved me from them um, and, I, and, um, and I'm now working I basically said semi-retired it's an advantage of, of give, getting old um, and I've I sort of officially work a couple of day, days a week to doing sort of con consulting work. Um, then the uh, rest of the time looking after grandkids, running them around, and, and also uh, doing QGIS work, work, work workshops and, and fun things with QGIS. So just to give you a background, ge geologists do all sorts of stuff. Um, there are many flavours of uh, geologists. Some work in mineral exploration, some in mining geology but also in the fields like civil engineering and uh, 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 hydrogeology, planetary geology. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is to, ca char is to ca characterise or we observe and characterise Earth and Earth processes or pl planetary processes if, if you're working uh, uh, with NASA or, who, or, or whatever. Um, and, and essentially what we do is we collect field data, uh, we, we compile... Uh, past sort of in, in, information and, 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 and field data that's being, being collected. And in the case of min, mineral exploration, we'd be looking for signs that might in, indicate uh, the presence of potentially economic min, min, mineralisation. So depending on the as, aspect of geology you were working in, uh, your, 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 work, your workflow will be, will be di 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 different. Uh, field conditions. Can, can vary from very good, nice sort of accommodation, the tents or swag on the back, back, back of your truck. Um, and we work in all par, par, parts of the world. And what's good about it being a geologist, the rocks are the same in Greenland as they are in Af Africa and all this sort of stuff. So uh, uh, I've been very fortunate to work in all, in all sorts, 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 sorts of places. That work, that work? Yeah. So, for example, in the top left here, I'm doing some geological ma mapping on some diamondiferous kimberlites in 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 in, in, uh, in, in Brazil. Um, the top top centre. That's not me. Um, but this is some dr 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 uh, drilling we're doing in in the in the Kim 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 Kimberley region. Ob ob obviously, obviously, before all the oc 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 health and safety got too intense. Um, and on the top right, some helicopter sampling in, Green, in, 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 in Green, uh, Green, uh, Green, uh, Greenland a couple of year, years ago. Um, the bottom left is a fly, fly camp we had in uh, southern North, Northern ter ter Territory in cent 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 Central Australia. Uh, some field mapping uh, in the centre cent 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 lower there uh, around the Argyle di Diamond Mine. 
And so, sometimes you really see some fun stuff. There's a little tray tray of diamonds that, that we recovered from some, some of our diamond exploration e e uh, sampling. So we get involved with heaps of all sorts of stuff all over the all over all over all over, all over the place. So in in a pre -di digital age, um, we we used to to construct our ge geological maps from uh, aerial photographs in. In, in, in you know the blow, 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 blow ups blowing up to the scale you want to map on, and you had a transparent overlay, and and your hand traced the features you saw in the field on the overlay, and then that would go 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 down to your head office somewhere, and then cartographers would would, would 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 stretch it out, providing you had some ground control points, um, and re rectify the, I the image. So that was something someone else 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 did. Um, uh, this is the area around the Arg 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 the Arg 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 Argold Diamond Mine. When we first worked in there, there, there was no survey control, so we had to employ a surveyor to put in ground control points so, so that we could rec 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 uh, rectify the map, um, all pre-GGIS stuff. So really exciting times. Um, some people might remember what this is. It's a li library. Um, and the machine down there is a, my, my, uh, a, a my, my microfiche reader. And in, in, the, in the 70s and 80s, this is all you had to, to go and access your data, to print your day, day, data out, so you could take take it back to your office and, and read, read, and read, read, uh, read, 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 read through it. And this is the only way to access day, data before the the the, 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 the digital age come come along. Um, and I remember I was in Dar 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 and, and I wanted to see, see some maps, and they sort of basically went into a, a big, big room full of big filing cabinets covered in dust, and that's the only, only way you could find out what, what had happened in, 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 in the past. I hope, I hope it's improved, but I'm not quite sure how Tanzania is going with all that sort of, sort of stuff. So, so this is the way we used to access data, and we ended up with all sorts of crap all over our offices, you know, the big pile, pile of reports or a big pile, pile, pile of maps. Um, and we, we had to store all this sort, 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 sort of stuff. Um, and if we had all, 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 all the maps, you needed to know what the projections were and when the, map, 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 the maps were drawn. Um, and you had to compile it all so you could pass it on to the client uh, when, you, when you finish your, 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 your uh, report. But, but, but basically what we were doing, we were looking at various lay layers of, of, of data. Um, and this is just an example on the right-hand side, I stole off the in, 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 internet there. But we've got multiple layers. There's, there's geology, there's ge 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 geophysics, there's aerial photography, there's satellite data, uh, including multi-spectral, multi multi-band uh, multi sort of layer. Then there's your field data that you pick up in the field. There's drilling data. Uh, rock analysis from surf surface sampling, and all of this sort of stuff is spatial. They, 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 they are spatial in information. They all have locations, and so even though in the 70s and 80s we didn't know what GIS was, we were still collecting spatial data, even though sometimes it wasn't very uh, very well lo located. Um, and so some of the some of the information coming in all very 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 various forms. Normally, when you're in the field collecting surface data, you have have your note, note, notebook and pencil. You, you might mark your points on, on an aerial photograph. Or when we got really, really, really modern, we had a GPS, um, which really saved a bit, bit, bit of time. But one of the problems we had with all, all this, all the, all these sort of the hard, hard, hard copy stuff, we had a large fire in, in one of our store, store sheds uh, in the, where we'd stored all, all our diamond sampling information. And all that was completely gone. It was all it was all destroyed by fire. So we had none of the original day data that we could go back to if there's any er errors in, in in the data. So so now in, in today's age where we have did 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 did, 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 did have multiple storage and multiple multiple copies, it's less likely that that's going to happen. So essentially, what we're trying trying to do is 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 to vi vi visualize the world in three three dimensions. Um, and, and trying to get a ha hand, handle on how, how all the different data sets in, 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 interrelate in three, three, three dimensions. Unfortunately, we don't have X-ray vision, um, but that's what would be really, really, really nice. And just seeing some of the di digital Earth stuff that the guys were showing uh, 
uh, ye yesterday, um, show showing the sort of the three D through through the through the surface and in, in, in the un underground facilities. That's the sort of stuff that that the geologists are trying to do in the head all the time. Now, some, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and then and just to, in a bit of history, you know, be, be, uh, before we had GIS. Uh, we used to have draftsmen in, 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 in the offices draw, 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 drawing up hard, hard copy of plans, and that's all, all, all we had. Um, the, the big change in, in the 1990s that we, we started to get ARC in, info, uh, and then that was usually mainframe stuff, and then it went on to PPCs, so more people then had ac access, but they still had to be fairly, fairly spe specialised. Um, and then in the two in the two 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 thousands, then PCs become more more common. Um, but there's also always a, a, li li a, a limited number of people that knew how to drive a PC and knew how to drive the soft software. Um, and also the software was quite quite expensive. So um, the the the, uh, the big companies had deep pockets, so they could buy the licenses. But if the small op operators, the in individual consultants. They, they couldn't really afford to shell out thousands and thousands of dollars for, for, for software. Um, when I first purchased uh, MapInfo Discover, I think it was about $8,000 at the time, and that was a lot, lot, lot of money for someone to, to shell out if you're an independent consultant. Plus, you had to pay $1,500 a year for maintenance, and so, so certainly with the, with the down, down, downturn in expiration in the, uh, it, after the, G, 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 and the GFC, and also in the last few years over in the West, people can't, couldn't afford to pay that, and so they used to drop their annual maintenance, so the software got out, out, of, out of date. And there's still a lot of people using out-of-date software in Perth. Um, then in, 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 in comes QGIS, Q, Q, G, 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 uh, basically about 2015, a colleague suggested I try it, because I really pretty, pretty did disillusioned with MapInfo, I hadn't really changed very much. And when I tried it at the time, it was a bit, bit, a bit clunky, so I didn't really sort of take, take it on you know, with gusto. But then in 2016, it really started to, to, to improve. And then I suggested to the a a AIG that we should, would run, run some work workshops, and then sort of it's grown, 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 it's grown, grown from there. there. There's still a bit of resistance from people who are rusted onto ARC and map, map, and map, map info, but I think eventually in, in a few more years those people are going to die, die, die out and then the younger generation will come up and I, and I think we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll get a lot better sort of uh, um, take up of it. So just an example of what geos do. We're, we're fairly sim simplistic usually. We, we like to have maps with low, low locations on them so we know how to get, get places. Um, we need to know where the op opposition are so we don't go on anybody else's tenements. And this is some, some, some uh, back, back, uh, background geology with expression ten, 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 tenements on. Um, this is an example of some airborne magnetic data. Now, this has been processed in, in QGGIS, so it's a, a straight sort of uh, me measurement sort of measures the magnetic properties of. of, of, of of the rocks, and if you process it the right right way, this is using a a, 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 a plug into QGIS called NMAP Box Three, and that gives you uh, a spatial Gaussian gradient mag magnitude filter, which does what we want it to do. Uh, it's not what that's called by geophysicists, but it, it does does the same sort of thing. So we can process this data in in in, in QGIS, QGIS now. And also being the ability to, to bring in live aer aerial photography, well, uh, dub, uh, uh, aer 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 uh, aerial photography, uh, web, live web sort of connections, and then we can in import our photos directly. If your photos have, have got GPS coordinates embedded, like most smart smartphone photos are now, you can just bring it straight in with a little plug-in, and you can put it in your map window, and you can exactly see. Uh, what, what, you, what, what you're using. I, 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 I use a, a Pentax K1 D, D, DLSLR and, that, and that's got an inbuilt G, 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 GPS so all the field photos can be imported directly into your, into your, uh, into, into your map. Uh, Sentinel data, this is uh, some remote sensing stuff so you can, you can use band combinations to, 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 to enhance the, G, the uh, ge geology. This is the Gosses Bluff impact structure in Northern Territory up on the top and and down the bottom, you can see some 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 of the enhanced uh, stratigraphy, and you can use another another pl plug in to look 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 at the three D visualization of the geology uh, as as uh, uh, as well. 
And, and again, if you can get to calculate the 3D coordinates down hole, you can plot, plot the information below the surface. This is a Google image draped over SRTM uh, ele elevation data uh, with, with, this, with the drill, drill, drill hole and surface sam sampling in information. Um, we, we deal with heaps of different sort of sources of, <laughs> of, 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 of data. So getting, getting all this compiled and in is one of the big, big challenges for, 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 for us geologists. So I've, I've, I've created this uh, user manual here basically based on my workshops I've been doing um, to explain ge geological type tasks. So if anybody wants a copy of that, please shoot me an e email. Uh, very happy to pass it on. And so now the, the, the really important thing is that geologists can now handle their own data. They can present it in, it, in any way they want. Um, and it allows them to free up their, um, Im, their, Im, their Im, imaginations. And they need, now they have to know about uh, bat, bat projections uh, as, as well, because that's really critical. Uh, there's been three so far in my working life, and there's another one coming. Um, so what people like about Q, Q, QGIS, it's relatively easy, easy to learn. Um, it heap, heaps of great uh, uh, f facilities in it. There's a great online community, quite a lot of support. Um, and pe people are amazed at the responsiveness of using QGIS. If they have a problem, they can post, post a question online. But what we really want is, is, a, is, a, is a dual hole cross section and, and 3D display uh, pl plugin. So if anybody out there that's keen to help us develop that, I'd really like to get a move movement going so, so that we can get this plugin, because that's the only thing that we're really mi mi missing from a really great piece of software. And just to finish, a huge thank you to all the developers and everyone in, 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 in QQ, Q, Q, QGIS, the people who have written those plugins are fantastic. I love, love them all. And the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the geologists of the world, thank, 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 thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Time for questions. Hey Grant, um, you've had some success with uh, getting the Geological Survey of Western Australia um, on board with supporting QGIS as one of its, uh, uh, with their data sets, publishing QLR files and, and so on. I'm just wondering if you have any advice for people who are in other jurisdictions who might be interested in getting their geological surveys to, to do the same. Yeah, well, we've, we've had, uh, well, I've actually got a work, work, workshop with the West Australian Geol Survey in a couple of week, weeks' time to, to take their PP people through QGIS. Uh, the people in Queen, Queen, uh, Queen, Queensland and New, New, New South Wales have Q, QGIS projects with QGIS symbology, so that's really great for the Queensland and New South Wales people here. Um, it's, fa it's, fa it's fairly quiet when I've tried to con con contact the other states. I don't get much, 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 much response, but I think... If you've got a lo local group who, 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 who is keen to push it, it probably works better if you can do it for on, on a lo lo local sort of basis. Um, if you know someone within the Joel sur surveys or whatever, go and talk to them and say, QGIS is a great product, can, can you help us sort of pu pu push it? So I think it's the personal one-to-one one, one -one contacts that seem to be the most effective. Yeah, Grant, what um, features does QGIS need to take it to the next step for geologists? What's missing? Uh, <laughs> well, it, 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 well, what it really needs, I, I think the only thing uh, missing for it is, is, is this drill drill hole package, because it can do just about anything else that, that the other, other software, the proprietary software packages can do. Um, so once we get this drill, drill hole and, and cross sec and pl pl plug in done, then no one will bother looking at some of these others. I don't think. But, but Grant, what it needs is somebody like yourself or I who used Discover to sit with the developer and explain how Discover works, because what we're asking for is something that is not familiar for people who are non-geologists. Correct. Sorry, well, that, that, that's that, what I meant by the last point. It, if, unless you've used Discover, Vulcan, Surfer, or those other packages, then you cannot visualise what you're asking for. Exactly right. And that, that's basically why I'm asking support. Maybe a, a group can get together where we can set out the specs, explain exactly what we want. There's a program called Leap, LeapFrog, uh, which is a really great piece of software, but it costs an arm and a leg. If we can em emulate that, then I think we'd be very, very pleased. Got more time for questions? Anyone? 
No? I have one. <laughs> Uh, uh, thanks, Grant. For me, your presentation really gave a perspective. Thank, thank you for that perspective of this is where I came from, this is where we're going. Uh, I think about education. So what do you think should be done uh, for, what should be taught to the young geologists? Or, because you said something about the next generation and uh, making sure they use QGIS. What do you think are the, uh, the methods to do that in education? Sorry, I that. Okay. All right. Uh, about uh, QGIS education and the next generation of geologists using yep. the software, what do you think should be done? Well, well I think one, one, one of the problems is that some of the universities are locked into es ESRI pr pr products, and so they te teach their students ARC. Um, I've tried to, 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 to do work, work, work workshops in the Uni of WA in, in Curtin Uni, and they both said, no, because we're being sponsored by, 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 by ESRI, which is really unfortunate. Um, but, but I guess what, what we can do, we can, we can try and do sort of pre presentations on, on the software to some, some of the mining, the, the mining presentations, like the geological societies and stuff, and maybe try and bring, bring up the level of knowledge of QGIS and so that people can see how cap capable the pro program is. And we can only do it, I think, like that.